some of you in, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually losing my voice, lucky for microphones. Some of you were told me you weren't that familiar with Richard Thompson, but those of you who are familiar with Richard Thompson were like, holy shit, you're having Richard Thompson? I mean, and you're gonna see why a lot of people had that attitude. He's, he's been a favorite of mine for decades, ever since I began getting good musical advice from friends who actually knew something. Um, and just to give you a little bit about Richard, he started recording with Fairport Convention in 1967 when he was 18 years old. And he really is, you know, his, his, his father was Scottish, played a lot of Scottish music when he was growing up, and there's a, a, a tremendous folk influence in Richard's music, but he's really one of the great synthesizers of folk and rock and roll, in my opinion. Um, and he's known for his songwriting, his guitar playing, and his singing. I'll just tell you some of the people that have covered his songs. Sean Colvin, Elvis Costello, Marshall Crenshaw, David Gilmore, Los Lobos, Maria McKee, Graham Parker, Robert Plant, Bonnie Raitt, and R.E.M. have all performed songs that he wrote. Um, one of the things about Richard that I like, you know, he's, he's, his songs, as you'll hear if you haven't heard his songs before, he's got a kind of a somewhat downbeat sensibility in some of his lyrics. You might even call some of them bleak. But the odd thing, as you can see right now, he's always smiling. So we, we'll probably get to that in the discussion portion, how that is squared. He did one of my all-time favorite albums, is one, an album I've played as much as any album that I own, and that includes Beatles albums, called Shoot Out the Lights, which he made with his then-wife, Linda Thompson, which is kind of a, in, in, you know, a, I guess, inadvertent chronicle of the breakup of your marriage or something like so, that. So, We'll, we'll get into that maybe. We may or may not get into that. But anyway, just to finish off the intro, last year he was uh, made an OBE by Queen Elizabeth, and he also received an honorary doctorate from the University of Aberdeen, so he's much honored, amazing guitarist, Richard Thompson. Thank you. I'll never live up to that, but we'll, we'll see what happens. That's when I really start to think You must have been running around You must have been running around As you were smiling Your friends say you're antsy For something fancy like a cage bird that's broken free you want to fly high or mess on me well i know you've got a secret or two yeah it's in a brand new do and you're so happy good things happen to birds What a teaser 
What's in that strange cologne I'm smelling? You know more than you're telling. Well, I know you've been running around. I know you've been running around because you're so happy. Good things happen to bad people. It's weird to sit up here while you're playing, I gotta say, but that's, I feel better than I've felt all day listening to that music. I've not been relaxed today. Um, so what's the story with that song? Uh, well, it's just a piece of fiction. It's obviously a kind of a jealousy song, but uh, personally, I don't have a jealous bone in my body. <laughs> is, that, is that a new song? Just ask my wife. Uh, is that, uh, that's a song off my next record. That's uh, what I thought. Yeah, that's from yeah. your new record, new which record. is coming out when? Uh, in February. And, notes. and <clears throat> in February, and I had the privilege of looking very closely at your finger work as you were playing guitar. Now, you tune your guitar unlike most. You don't use a standard tuning. Not really standard. The, um, th that's fairly standard, but not totally standard. And, and just, but what is it you do differently with your guitar your strings? I just think it's not a tech question, but it's a well, music. Well, um, uh, if, if you're a solo performer. Um, uh, sometimes you want to get a bigger sound out of a guitar. So if you're playing the guitar up here, it's kind of, it sounds a little small. Yes, yes, small, tiny, mind you. Um, so uh, if, you, if you have more strings ringing, you, you can create kind of, kind of a bigger sound, a more orchestral sound. Uh, and so. Um, a lot, a lot of folk guitar players um, uh, use these open tunings. Um, and also the open tunings uh, can be uh, modal, they can kind of suggest uh, kind of an unresolved you know, tension in the music, uh, which is also a very useful thing if you're writing strange music. Yeah, I don't think it's so strange, but okay, that's I cool. Do. But, but you, you, have, you have multiple tunings you use, it's not just yeah, one, right? Yeah, different ones, yes. So I, I've been listening a lot to your music the last few days really getting ready for this, although as I say, I've been listening to your music for years. It's been a huge pleasure, <clears throat> and I've been doing it entirely on Spotify. How do you <laughs> feel about that? Um, well, I love Spotify, as long as they pay musicians. But, but do they? Um, well, I've received precisely zero so far for, from Spotify. Um, there's a th thing in the paper the other day, someone like Beyonce uh, got sort of six dollars last week or something for, for Beyonce. So, so if they're paying, it's an incredibly, infinitesimally small amount. They keep, they keep promising that they're going to get it up to a real figure, but um, mostly they're basically ripping off musicians as far as I'm concerned. Anyone, any, anyone here this evening from Spotify? Well, lucky, lucky, last no, year we had Sean know. Parker here, but uh, not this, nobody from <laughs> Spotify here, I don't think. Um, but so, so it's, it's something you're a little dubious about as a, as a commercial... Uh, um, thing. Well, you know, like a lot of, um, you know, uh, internet technologies, they're kind of a double-edged sword in that uh, it's great to have the promotion from something like, like YouTube, um, but uh, th there's no revenue stream from it, so, so um, it, it's, it's a tough one, one for musicians. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm fairly established at the established end, end of music, uh, but for young kids, um, it, it would be great if they had the, that income stream as well, um, to, just to keep them alive, basically, keep them eating, because uh, for young bands, it's a real struggle sometimes. Yeah, we were talking at breakfast about how my daughter, who's 20, was telling me that what most of the college kids do now is they rip the songs off YouTube. And there's software that they get, and they just take the music, which is the accompaniment of the videos, and mm. that's what they put on their iPhones. Yeah, well, which is strange, because uh, you know, the quality of music, they get, the quality of sound they're getting, uh, in, in that process is really, really bad. 
And, uh, you know, you know the, the probably only, you know, 5% of people who listen to music are listening to it in the way it was, it was meant to be heard, i.e., you know, high fidelity, like, like, like good sounding, you know, good sounding speakers, good, good sounding technology, good sounding CD or vinyl or whatever you choose, you know. But uh, most people are listening on earbuds, which are not very good usually, um, on, on an iPod, and it's, um, you know, it's pretty crappy. Um, so I, I'm always surprised that people will put up with that. Well, you know, I mean, Neil Young is famously yeah. really acerbically critical of MP3s <clears throat> generally, and, and he's got this whole thing with these special discs that he's produced for some of his... So you, you feel like... Have you ever tried to bypass that problem in, in any technological way, or is it something you just sort of resign yourself to? Or uh, I'm not sure there's anything I can do. I, you know, uh, we try to make records that, that sound as good as they can sound. Um, uh, and, and beyond that, you, you, there's nothing you can do really. You, you have to uh, to get it in, into a format. Uh, you know, CD format again isn't isn't actually absolutely perfect, but uh, it's not bad. It's close. But you still sell quite a few CDs too, right? Um, I have what's called a mature audience, um, <laughs> for the most part. But they're, they're, they're getting slowly getting younger or dying off. I'm not quite sure which. Uh, but um, they're rather a traditional fan base, and, and they do tend to buy CDs to the point where, you know, I outsell a lot of younger artists um, uh, on CD, which is amazing. I, see, I get in the charts on CD. How about that, folks? How about that? <laughs> oh, thank you. You're too kind. <clears throat> you I, know, I didn't say where on the charts. Hey, the charts are the charts. Somewhere in the charts. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about your website and stuff, but maybe I want to do that in a minute. Um, okay. Uh, can I uh, ask you another question that leads to a song? You could try. I don't, I don't want to do, be too pushy on the next one, but you know, you have a great song called uh, Money Shuffle, which I happen to like, and I thought since we have, a, unfortunately for possibly the song, quite a few wealthy people in the audience, um, I thought it might be funny for you to play that song. Well, I'll try, okay. Can um, I ask you to? You could. This, this, this kind of a, you know, I wrote this a couple of years ago as a kind of a, a diatribe against um, the shortcomings of Wall Street and, and some of the uh, investment bankers there. Um, You'll find a lot of sympathy for that here, I, I'm I sure. I think I will. I'm sure I will. We'll, we'll see. Uh, if, if, I, if I last the whole song, you know. your money is so safe with me you never met such an honest man glossies on my office wall the rich and famous I know them all come on and do the money shuffle I've got you right there where I want you come on and do the money shuffle can't find your money if you want to Stuck a market going through the roof now So rich I'll never write it up now I've got your favorites here somewhere Here at Warbrook and Jones it's our tradition Oh, we never pimp And we don't hustle But if you'll just Bend over a little I think you'll feel My financial muscle Spread it wide, wide as you can To get the full benefit of my plan Come on and do the money shuffle I've got you right there where I want you Come on and do the money shuffle Come find your money if you want to My God, the market's in a free fall I'll save my ass and skip the country Wish the hell I knew what I was doing How 
sublime Now it's subprime time One man's junks, another man's triple A If you need a little refuge for your pension funds Just for you, I throw some jewels your way just spread it wide, wide as you can To get the full benefit of my plan Come on and do the money shuffle I've got you right there where I want you Come on and do the money shuffle I've got your money if you want to Oh yeah, sorry, that was, yeah I hear the sound of distant thunder AIG and Lehman's going under Will I get my bonus, I wonder? Come on and do the money shuffle 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 Well, thank you for that. That was amazing. Um, and I don't think most of us would disagree with whatever the sentiments were that were being whatever expressed there. I'm not quite sure what the sentiment was, but yeah, it's all, all, all positive, I'm sure. I'm positive, I'm sure. So, you know, do you, do you consider yourself, I mean, to what extent do you consider yourself a traditional musician? Um, well, I come from a tradition. I, you know, I, I grew up listening to uh, folk music. Uh, particularly um, Celtic music, Scots-Irish music, so I, I'm very much in, in that tradition. Um, at, at the same time, uh, rock and roll was around, so, so I, I, I kind of fuse Celtic and rock and roll and, and other, whatever other bits and pieces um, I hear. But, um, you know, I, I am from a tradition. I, I, I'm not a traditional musician, but I, 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 I build on a tradition. How do you feel about, you know, as technology has completely transformed or overturned the way that music is consumed and, yeah. and distributed, is that, has that been good or bad for what you think of as traditional music, in your opinion? Um, probably good, I think. Yeah, um, the, the, the fact you can get music from anywhere. You, you, you can get uh, you know, Siamese music uh, as easy as you can get Scottish music, you can, as easy as you can get African music. Um, it's all right there. Um, but, but I think as the world shrinks, uh, as it becomes a, a smaller globe, um, I think at some point people are, are going to want to emphasize um, the, the, their difference rather than their similarity to everybody else. I, I think people are going to want to say, this is where I come from. You know, I'm from Ireland. This is, this is, this is the way we dress traditionally. This, this is the way we eat traditionally. This is the kind of music um, that, that we, we listen to traditionally. Uh, I, th I, th I, think, I do think that will become important to people. I think that's somewhat happening already. I, I, th think, I think it yeah. happens, yeah. It, it kind of goes in cycles a little bit. But, um, so it does by that happen. logic, it's good for traditions that might have otherwise been hard to sustain. Well, I think so. And um, yeah, yeah, one, of, one of the things uh, that has happened tradi traditions is that um, technology has wiped them out. Uh, when the gramophone arrived in Europe, um, traditional music almost disappeared completely. Um, because imported music was more interesting and more romantic. You know, it, it was better to be sitting in, you know, freezing in Britain, listening to something like Carolina Moon, um, you know, something about somewhere else that was, it seemed nicer than where you lived than listening to, to your own uh, indigenous music. Um, so so that, that's always the danger, but I don't think that's going to happen this time. So um, at some point, I'm hoping tonight you'll play one of those songs that's more of a real traditional song, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you feel like it. Sure, yeah. Um, but, you know, so you are very um, aggressive in the way you use the web, right? Um, um, yeah, I try to be, yeah. I mean, should we talk about that? Or you yeah, let's talk about that. I, I don't want to like, make you play too many songs too fast here, but um, I would love to. But, um, but I really want to hear you talk about your website. And you know, you, you've really made a real effort to connect with your <clears throat> community, which is something that we talk about at Techonomy a lot, that the ability to self-organize, to, to draw connections for people to have relationships they couldn't otherwise have. And you, how would you say it's changed your career to have such a, you know, a very sophisticated website in terms of the, the number of functions that you have and the ways you you, you give your fans to experience your music and buy it and 
learn about what you're up to and you have dialogues with them and answer their questions and things yeah. like that? Um, I, I think, I think uh, the, 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 the internet replaces um, the old model of the music business, which was the big record companies. Big record companies uh, had their faults. Um, I, the biggest one was probably they, they never paid you, which is a fairly serious fault, I think. Um, I guess so. But uh, they, they also nurtured young artists. I, I'll take a good example, uh, uh, say Warner Brothers in the 1960s, 1960s Warner Brothers, um, which was run by uh, music fans, enthusiastic people uh, who, who knew about music and could spot talent. That's a very, very important thing. That, that they knew how to spot talent and, and they didn't have to answer to a committee. Um, that They could just say, I've got a hunch about this artist, I've got a hunch about Bonnie Raitt or Ry Cooder or Randy Newman. Um, let's sign them. And they weren't expecting immediate returns. They, 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 they keep Randy Newman on the books for, for 10 years at least, uh, same with Bonnie Raitt, without selling any records. Van Dyke Parks, Ry Cooder, you know, all, all these um, great people. They, they made their money from the crass pop stuff, but then the, the company had enough money to, to, to nurture um, uh, new talent. Um, and uh, record companies also would promote you if they believed in, the, in you, that they would spend money to promote you. Now, um, there's nobody spending money to promote artists anymore except the artists themselves. So, so the internet is a way of reaching an audience. You still have the hurdle of um, uh, letting people know you're there. And, and I suppose, um, uh, you know, we've been talking about algorithms and stuff and, and databases. I think more and more it's possible to reach uh, your target audience um, that these days on, on the internet, um, your, your potential audience. But um, uh, w w once you have the audience, then I think they now expect um, a kind of an interchange with the artist. They, they, they expect the, answer, the artist to, um, to, to have some uh, profile on the web, to actually you know, to, to write something. Um, I do a kind of Q&A every month on, 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 with the fans on, on the web, uh, and I, I think they like that very much. Um, I, I kind of indirectly post stuff on Facebook all the time. Um, uh, our Facebook page, you know, it, it is renewed almost every day. There's something new on, on, on there. Um, I think our website gets like uh, it gets over a million hits a month, which is pretty good. It gets like 1.3 million hits a month, which for an old rock and roll dinosaur, I think it's pretty good actually. And, and you, who, who never sold any records? No, it's that's pretty good. good. And, <laughs> and you all you do sell quite a bit of material on your website. Uh, we do. Uh, since the 90s, we, you know, we, we've been doing our own kind of bootlegs. Um, I got rather horrified by the bootleg um, industry um, in the sort of late 80s, early 90s. And, and at some point, we said, well, let's just, uh, let, let's just put out the same things that the bootlegs are, bootleggers are putting out. We'll, we'll, we, you know, we have a, a tape of this concert as well that these guys have bootlegged. So we'll stick it out and we'll see who wins. And uh, the bootleggers went away. Very interesting. Um, so that, that was the beginning of us offering uh, things uh, as kind of uh, as web exclusives, website exclusives. Uh, and, and we've been doing that regularly ever since. And your record label was OK with that? They, they were, actually. Yeah, even, even the major labels said, well, we don't really care. Um, it was so far below their radar that, that, that they wouldn't notice you know, anything under you know, 700,000 records. Well, we were talking yeah. about the savoir faire of the record industry earlier today. I mean, you were saying that you could put out songs that they didn't even really give you the rights to put out and they wouldn't even notice. No, absolutely true. Um, a friend of mine, um, can I mention his name? Um, Fine with me. Uh, Jeff Muldaur, a wonderful blues singer. Um, and a couple of years ago, he wanted to put out a sort of a greatest hits of his career. Um, and he went to, 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 to Warner Reprise and... Uh, uh, and couldn't get through to anybody. Uh, he just couldn't get through on the phone to anybody at the record label uh, who could deal with it. So he thought, well, screw them. I'm just going to put it out anyway. If they come after me, fine, I'll pay them. But uh, they, they never did. Uh, um, so he just just put it out, you know, fine. Well, that, that industry has thrived with such an <laughs> attitude. Um, <laughs> so um, I want to, you know, we're going to take a few requests, I think, if, he, if you're willing. Can I make a request, though? Oh, go ahead. Well, one that I think a lot of people here, including me, want to hear is uh, 1952 Vincent Black Lightning. How oh. about that? Can, can I do that? You can do that. <clears throat> I might have to stand up for that one. Hmm? I might have to stand for that. I don't <clears throat> care. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, um, the, the, this, this song is, uh, is, uh, is very much in, in a kind of uh, traditional format. Um, you know, I grew up, I grew up listening, um, I, I was a sad, lonely child, and I grew up listening to these um, 17th century Scottish ballads where, where everybody get, dies, you know, and gets killed. And, uh, but it was wonderful. But, 
We, after you play it, we could. Well, maybe we should, before you play it, talk about what happened in the bluegrass industry because with this song. I mean, this song has been turned into a bluegrass song. This is true. Um, this is, this is a, it's a very British song, and it's about a British motorcycle called, called the Vincent Motorcycle. They're a very famous uh, uh, brand. And um, uh, at some point, uh, a chap called Dil McCurry picked it up uh, for, for his bluegrass band, and it became a big. Um, it was like the biggest bluegrass hit of, the, of, of whatever year it was. I mean, it's massive. Um, yeah, but ma massive in bluegrass is sort of, uh, you know, 57 sales, you know, it's very, very, not, not a huge market, but still, I was very proud, pleased and proud. It's still one of his most popular songs that he performs. It is, yeah. <laughs> Need space for this. <clears throat> Says Red Molly to James That's a fine motorbike Oh, a girl could feel special in any such like Says James to Red Molly Oh, my hat's off to you It's a Vincent Black Lightning 1952 And I've seen you at the corners and cafes it seems Red hair and black leather, my favorite color scheme when he pulled around behind And down to Box Hill The Deride Says James to Red Molly there's a ring for your right hand But I tell you in earnest, I'm a dangerous man For I fought with a law since I was seventeen I robbed many a man to get my Vincent machine And now I'm twenty-one years and I'd make twenty-two And I don't mind dying but for the love of you And if fate should break my stride I give you my Vincent to ride. Taking young James A. D. for armed robbery. Shotgun blast hit his chest, left nothing inside. Come down, Red Molly, to his dying bedside. When she came to the hospital, there wasn't much left. He was running out of road, he was running out of breath. But he smiled to see her cry. Said I'll give you my Vincent to ride. Says James, in my opinion, there's nothing in this world beats a '52 Vincent and a red-headed girl. Not triumphs and Nortons and Beezers won't do. 
They don't have a soul like a Vincent, 52. Oh, he reached for her hand and he slipped her the keys. Said, I've got no further use for these. I see angels on aerials in leather and chrome swooping down from heaven to carry me home. And he gave her one last kiss of dad. And he gave her as Vincent to ride. So, um, I don't know how long we can go with this. I don't know. Tell me what you want to do. What you want to do? Um, uh, shall I ask you some more questions? Certainly. Okay. Um, your creative process, you know, and technology has it changed it? I mean, you're a pretty digitally aware guy, and you're a traditional musician. But what does it mean for the way you make music? Um, Create. Well, um, uh, technology is a wonderful uh, adjunct. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful help. Um, for instance, I mean, there's amazing li little, you know, r recording devices. Uh, you, you can just get amazing stereo recordings out, out of something this big. Uh, you know, um, uh, it's really good. It's, it's, if, if we're coming up to rehearsal with, with the band, um, I, I can send out files of, of upcoming songs um, uh, and scores, you know, um, and that saves... 50% rehearsal time, oh, that, that's a great thing to have. Um, uh, the musical notation software, fantastic, wonderful thing. Um, uh, which um, you can input from a, from a keyboard, you can input, input from a computer keyboard or, or a keyboard keyboard um, or a MIDI instrument. Uh, just fantastic, um, speedy way of, of, of writing notes down. And uh, if it's, say you're writing a symphony for, for an orchestra, um, you know, this is a massive saving of time, because otherwise you have to physically write out every single part. Um, I, I, imagine Frank Sinatra in 1956, he's in the studio with Nelson Riddle, and, uh, and he says to Nelson Riddle, you, you know, Nelson, I, I love the arrangements, fantastic, you know, you've got the band, you've got the strings, it all sounds wonderful. Um, but the key, you know, you, you've written it in B flat, I, I'm really not comfortable, it's a little bit high, C could you drop it to A? Nelson Riddle thinks, oh shit, you know, oh my god, you know, what are we going to do? Because Nelson Riddle knows that, that, that to, to move everything a semitone is a massive amount of work. You know, so he's, he's got to get his copyists, his, you know, six copyists to work, work all night to get, you know, the, the, the new arrangement. Um, with, uh, you know, a good software like Sibelius, um, you just hit a button and it drops it. Sibelius is what it's called. Uh, so Sibelius, is, is, I think it's the best one for very good stuff. But it's, it's just a huge, um, you know, labor-saving device. Um, That's just instant what would have taken well, overnight instant, for six um, people. You know, and also, if you have repeating passages, you know, you, you've got a section here that repeats, uh, you know, 40 bars further down. You just grab it and copy it, and it's just fantastic. Um, uh, and also, a, kind of a lazy man's uh, way of orchestrating. Uh, um, it will tell you if you've gone below the bottom note of, of the bassoon or, or you know, uh, above the usual top note of the oboe, you know, it, it'll actually tell you, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, inputting strange clefts uh, like viola, oh, it's, it's so hard to read, I, I find it really hard to, to re read viola music. Uh, but you just input the note and it just magically appears on the viola clef, it's just wonderful stuff. And this has been more relevant <clears throat> to you lately even because you've been writing some fairly complex arrangements for the musical that you've written called Cabaret of Souls, <laughs> right? Talk about that a little bit. Okay, Cabaret of Souls. Uh, we just performed this for three nights in Santa Monica in, in Los Angeles. Uh, this is a kind of a musical play um, that, that's set in the underworld. Uh, the, the, the audience is basically dead. Uh, they're not really dead. But, but, He's such uh, an upbeat guy. But, but that's the idea. Well, it's, it's a dark comedy. There's funny stuff as well. You, you don't you didn't get the funny stuff. Um, and uh, this, this has a string orchestra. It ha has like huge, giant, massive puppets. Uh, has dancers. Uh, 15, 15 musicians on stage. Um, 
So this is a big undertaking, and it's, um, it's about uh, 80 minutes of music uh, that, that all had to be written. Uh, so I wrote all that at Sibelius, which is a huge time saver, a wonderful thing. And uh, any, any of you fancy sponsoring um, a musical, see me afterwards, thank you. And, and um, th that is going to be an album at some point. Uh, it is an album now, yes. Uh, the, the, the album is done. Um, uh, that, that's not released yet, though. It's released, yes. Just was released. Well, we have oh, because it wasn't on Spotify. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm but very sorry about that. Uh, that that's just finished. Uh, well, we, we, we don't have the video to go with it, but, but uh, that's coming as well soon, we hope. So that's available commercially now? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay. Um, I had a question that I just forgot. Um, but it's the end of the day. You know, I, I, uh, we talked about maybe taking a few requests from the audience. Would be willing to hear somebody's uh, request? I'd be amused to hear someone's request. And anybody have a, a request? What was that? Okay. Well, I didn't hear what you said, but I did hear "Shoot Out the Lights," which is okay. definitely one I want to hear. Okay. Yeah, do a duet. Bullshit. Okay. Okay. Sam, we're gonna kick you out of here. Okay. So shoot out the lights, Valerie. Please, okay, oh, Valerie, that was one I wanted to hear. Should I sit up here or should I sit on the floor and worship you? Um, I, I get enough worship in my life. I, I don't really. Do you want me to stay here? Well. Yeah, no, no, you can. It, it, it got the tambourine there. Okay, that's <laughs> Just the cocktail shaker will do fine. I think. Dark, who can see his face in the dark? Who can reach him? He hides like a child. He hides like a child. Keeps his finger on the trigger. Oh, he can't stand the day. Shoot out the lights Keep the blind down on the window Keep the pain on the inside Just watch in the dark Just watch in the dark He might laugh, but you won't see him As he thunders through the night Shoot out the lights Shoot out the lights darkness the shadows move in the darkness the game is real realize it gone realize it gone as he watches the lights of the city when he moves through the night Shoot out the lights Shoot out the lights Shoot out the lights Shoot out the lights
You've added a few elements to that song since the original album. I'm very sorry. Uh, I like it, actually. You know, it's a little jazzified. Time ch changed, David. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, do me that. Okay, let me just do, do Valerie now. Okay, do me that. Valerie, yeah, yeah. Another of your fine requests. Thank you so much. <clears throat> You've all had a hard day, so it's good to unwind, relax. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like working in Vegas. Not the crowd, the, the climate, it's very dry. Oh, Valerie, you give me heart to attack. Oh, Valerie, you put me on the rack. You say that I'm history, you say I'm no good. Then you wanna be two babes in the wood. That's what I call playing to the gallery. Well, I'm wait, wait, waiting for Valerie. She got a scar down here, Valerie She got gold in her ear A figure like this, lips like that Red fingernails, teeth like a cat She never gets home till five or four or three Well, I'm wait, wait, waiting for Valerie Well, I'm soft in the head I give her hard cash She spend all my money on junk and trash And I look for plastic shoes 57 things she's never gonna use Never, never, never I'm gonna use a Valerie Oh Valerie Oh Valerie Oh Valerie You're gonna choke it around Valerie why don't you put this down if you don't get over this Satan Jack? They're gonna take you home and a body back. I can't stand to see one more calorie. Well, I'm a wait, wait, waiting for Valerie. Oh, every time I turn my back, she's round the corner looking for a crack. It's gonna be the ruin of me. I'm running on nervous energy. Running on nervous energy. Oh, Valerie. She wants to move out of town, Valerie. She want the money down. She want leopard skin this, tiger skin that, matching luggage, lipstick, hat. I can't afford her on my salary. Well, I'm a wait, wait, waiting for Valerie. Well, I'm a wait, wait, waiting for Valerie. I'm a wait, wait, waiting for Valerie. Now that's a folky who can rock. Uh, 
I see Andrew up there who used to own a music club. I'm sure he's familiar with some of this. Richard played at your place? He used to run Irving Plaza. Are you kidding? Can you believe it? Oh, now, now he's a tech dude. Wow. Well, you know, well, that was, was a great place. I, 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 I love playing there. Thank you. Still there? Yeah. yeah. It's been one of the best, best shows we've ever had. Thank you. Wow, well, we loved it. The cr crowd was fantastic. Brilliant. Wonderful. Just shout it out if you got something to say. Do, what should you do to me the directors? Who's Valerie? Who's Valerie? Um, it's actually a woman I sat next to on the plane once. Uh, she was Is that true? Really? Absolutely extraordinary. She was uh, quite on another planet entirely. I, I, mean, I, I filled in a few, a few of the gaps. If you know what I, mean. <laughs> I, I speculated somewhat about her, her, the rest of her life. But she was quite, quite interesting. This is a... Uh, Oh, good choices, excellent. Good. Let, let me get through this really depressing song before I get on to the next really depressing song. This old house has fallen down around my ears. I'm drowning in the fountain of my tears. Oh, my will is gone And you hold me swear I need you at the demon of the day You pull me like the moon pulls on the tide Just where I keep my better side Nowadays I've come to keep us far apart A broken promise or oh. A broken heart No other bunny buds My weed away I need you at the demon of the day Don't you come and ease your mind with me I'm living for the night that we steal away I need you at the demon of the day The demand of the day. That's right. Oh. How many artists have covered that song? Uh, I don't know. A lot. Um, quite a few, yeah. A lot of really famous artists, too. Uh, Tom Jones just did it. It was very cool. Really? Yeah, that's very cool. Bonnie Raitt famously Bonnie has Bonnie Raitt did it. Yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah. that was nice. Uh, Blind Boys of Alabama did it. Um, all, all kinds of interesting people. Good song. 
So you, you're going to do more requests, or should I ask you more questions? I don't know if I have it. Ask me another question. Uh, oh, I was going to ask you about this dour, bleak thing and the smile on the face. Yeah. How, how do you square that? Um, well, you know, I, I grew up listening to, to traditional music where, where, you know, there's sort of mining disasters every five minutes and, and um, you know, unbelievable incest and, and uh, a lot of people dying, basically. I mean, you know, basically everybody. So, to me, that's, that's sort of normal. That, that's the line of normal right there. Uh, and I try to put myself slightly, slightly on the optimistic side of, of, of that, you know, of, of my upbringing. So I'm, I'm sort of working my way to happiness. But I, I think we like sad music. I, I think we love sort of, uh, you know, the Leuven brothers or the Everly brothers or something, you know, you know singing sad songs. Uh, it, it, I think it touches something inside us. Um, it, it's not somewhere that we, we, we live all the time, but, but, it, but it's nice to, to just to, to touch that point and, and, and then move on occasionally. It's, it's kind of, it's sort of cathartic, I think, sometimes as well. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I love that stuff. Sorry. But you have a good time singing about sad things. Well, I do. I, I, you, know, uh, you know, there's only so much sort of, you know, Julie Andrews I can, I can take. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you know, that's nice too occasionally, but, you know, but I, I think as a general diet, I, I think we like kind of, you know, love songs and sad songs. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm alone in this, am I? Uh, no, I don't think so. But, but you're looking at me as though I am. No, no, but you know, uh, I don't know what it is. Um, uh, no, I think that you have a particular reputation for having a dark side as a songwriter without it being a downer for the listeners. Clearly, we love it. But, well, but um, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, I mean, I do think Shoot Out of the Lights is one of the most, there's sort of a, a tragic undertone to it that makes it even more powerful, aside from the fact that every song on the album is amazing, um, which is just an interesting thing. Except right? for the bad ones. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I didn't think there was a... There are only eight songs on that album, right? How well, many? The, well, the shorter the album is, the more chance you have of, of uh, not having too many bad ones. You know? Yeah, well, you, you succeeded, I think. Um, the two-song album. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. So are you enjoying Techonomy? Pardon? Are you enjoying Techonomy so far? I thought today was fantastic. I, 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 I found it so interesting. I, you know, I started at, uh, at the beginning and uh, nearly got to the end. I had to get to my stuff ready for sound check, but um, I, th I thought it was absolutely great. No, we're really happy to have you here. Well, thank and, you. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I mean, I'm just blown away that I'm sitting up here on this Herman Miller stool next to Richard Thompson. Um, so I don't know. You, you can wrap it up whenever you want to, because I don't um, want to press you too hard. Okay. She misses the fair. Okay. Oh, good choices. Okay. Um, let, let, let me let me do the, those two, which are, I've been playing lots of up tempo stuff. So I'm, I'm going to send you to bed, feeling really, really like you're going to kill yourselves now. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is a couple. This is a song for all, all the the drunks in the audience this evening. That's that's Brian and Samantha. <clears throat> then I'll do uh, Shoot Most of the Fair, which is an Irish traditional song, which is a very beautiful song. Will there be any bartenders up there in heaven? Will the pubs never close? Will the glass never drain? No more DTs and no shakes and no horrors. Very next morning, you feel right as rain. Cause God loves a drunk, the lowest of men, like the dogs in the street and the pigs in the pen. But a drunk's only trying to get free of his body and saw like an eagle. High up there in heaven His shouts and his curses They are just hymns and praises To kickstart his mind now and then Oh God loves a drunk Come raise up your glasses Amen Does God really care for your life in the suburbs? Your dull little life full of dull little things. And 
bring up the babies to be just like daddy and maybe you'll be there when he gives out the wings cause God loves a drunk although he's a fool oh he wets in his pants and he falls off his stool and he can't hear the insults and whispers go by him as he leans in the doorway and he sings Sally Racket he can't feel the cold rain beat down on his body and soak through his clothes to the skin Oh God loves a drunk Come raise up your glasses Amen Will there be any pen pushers Up there in heaven Does clocking and wage slaving Win your God's love I pity you worms With your semis and pensions If you think that'll get you To the kingdom above But God loves a drunk Although he's a clown Oh, you can't tell but laugh As he gags and falls down don't don't give a toss for what people think of him he screams at his demons alone in the darkness he's staying alive for just one more pint bottle won't you throw him a few pennies friend oh god loves a drunk Forever and ever, Amen. <laughs> and you don't even drink. It reminded me, got me thinking about a. a I'm a poetry guy, and there's a great poem called The Drunk Man Looks at the Thistle, which just got by a great Scotsman, Hugh McDiarmid. I don't know. I love that poem, um, although it's in Scots, and I have trouble understanding it. But um, anyway. So, you're, you know, there is one song that, you know, he plays a lot of weird covers. I just want you to know that he plays Oops, I Did It Again. And I was sort of hoping, I mean, if you had to end, I don't know what you were going to play for the other song, but I would love to hear that one. I'm sorry. So, so my music's not good enough for you. You, you. you know, he does some shows that are all requests and not just requests of his songs. Any song, <clears throat> he will do that. Which not that he'll do it tonight, but but I hope he'll play. Oops, I, I did. You've asked for it. <clears throat> I think this is actually a really good uh, good song. Um, uh, Kind of a classic pop song, uh, produced by those Swedish guys uh, um, who, who uh, know all about pop music. Um. I think I did it again. I made you believe we are more than just friends. It might seem like a crush, but that doesn't mean that I'm serious. To lose all my senses It's just so typically me Ooh, baby, baby Oops, I did it again I play with your heart Got lost in the game Ooh, baby, baby Oops, you think I'm in love I'm sent from above I'm not that innocent You see, my problem is this I'm dreaming away 
Wishing that he rose Truly exist I cry watching the dead You see I'm a fool In so many ways But to lose all my senses That's just so typically me Ooh, baby, baby Oops, I did it again I played with your heart Got lost in the game Ooh, baby, baby Oopsie, you think I'm in love I'm sent from above I'm not that innocent Oops I play with your heart You don't know this one, do you? Oops, think I'm, I'm sent from a Innocent, innocent, innocent. Oops, I did it again, that's pathetic Play with your heart, got lost in the game Ooh, baby, baby, oops, you think I'm in love I'm sent from above, I'm not that innocent You know what I was thinking about when you were playing that? Did anybody see the South Park episode about Britney Spears? That is one of the weirdest South Park episodes ever. Anyway, if you ever get a chance and you've got a strong stomach. I have to do one more. Oh, right, fine, fine. Play all you want. This is a, a traditional Irish song. Well, it's not a traditional Irish song. It, it was actually a poem uh, that was set to music, I think, in about the 1930s. I forget who wrote it. Um, um, anyway, uh, it's kind of a ghost story. My young love said to me my mother won't mind And my father won't slight you For your lack of kind And she laid her hand on me And the she did say Oh, it will not be long, love, till our wedding day. And she stepped away from me, and she moved through the fair. And finally I watched her move here and move there And then she went onward with the one star awake Like the swan in the evening Glides over the lake. Last night she came to me. My dead love came in And so softly she came That her feet made no din And she laid her hand on me 
Thank you. Well, thank you. It's really an honor to have you here. We really appreciate it. It's a real honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Thanks for playing so many beautiful songs, too. 